But I did want to mention one thing uh, in relation to actually what we're going to be doing today as the body of Christ in our service. We've spent the last three weeks here at the church, visitors, uh, verifying the identity of the Christ child for Scripture. Take a look at all the prophecies in, in his word about his birth, breaking those things down and looking at the multiple identities that we find that Jesus Christ you know, exemplifies, that he actually is a part of. And, and one of the reasons that these prophecies you know, are, are an indication not just of the identity of Jesus, but also of the divine authorship of Scripture and the trustworthiness of the message of Scripture. And that's because they have a minute probability of fulfillment. Okay. I mean, the probability of fulfillment of all the scriptures that all the prophecies that were about Jesus Christ is, is, is mind-boggling. Okay. There's a mathematical science, it's called the science of probability, and what it attempts to do, it tries to determine that the chance that a given event will occur. What's the chance that a given event will occur? It was a uh, mathematics professor at Westmont College that assigned a, uh, a, to his class one semester. They needed to calculate the probability of one man accurately fulfilling the major prophecies that were made in the Bible concerning the Messiah. That one man would actually fulfill that. And, and they started out and gave them eight prophecies. He said, I want you to come up with a mathematical probability of one person being able to fulfill these prophecies. In the Bible, I'm going to give you one. I'm going to give you one example. Okay, so so figuring out this this is really complicated. I mean, this was an entire semester's worth of work. One copy. The, the Bible tells us where is he? Where was he born? Okay, so when you figure out the probability, it's not that it's just that one person who was born in Bethlehem. When you figure out the probability, is you have to understand because we don't we you know it doesn't tell us when it was going to take place. But that prophet just says where. So you have to from the time that, that Bethlehem was founded. Until the present day, how many people have lived in Bethlehem? Somehow or another, they got that information, and so the, the answer would have been one in however many people that was. Okay, so you understand that this probability that we're talking about of eight, of eight prophecies in the Bible is way more complicated than just figuring out, okay, well, what's the chance of him being, you know, that being the God? So they started out with, hey, what do you think the probability was that, that, that one man would have fulfilled those first eight prophecies that they talked about? It's one in 10 to the 17th power. That's 10 to the 17 zeros. Okay, that's kind of big. So we thought, okay, this is cool. Let's go to 48. What's the, what's the probability that Jesus, one man, could have fulfilled the prophecies that were written about him before he was born in Scripture, what's the probability that one man could have come and fulfilled all 48 of those prophecies? It's 1 in 10 to the 157th power. That is 10 to the 157th power. In the science of probability, in the science of probability, there's a statement that says any, anything that is at the point of 10 to the 50th power is statistically impossible. Okay, so 10, 10 to the 50th power, anything beyond that is statistically impossible, can't happen. That's a law, that's a mathematical law. Okay, now let's reverse that for a second. Think about it this way, that's saying that you know, something can't happen. What if something did happen? What if something did happen that blew that 10 to the 50th power out of the water. What if one man fulfilled all those 48 prophecies, 10 to the 157th power, one man came and did that, statistically impossible event taking place. It's statistically impossible that one person could do that. And yet there are 456 prophecies in God's word that Jesus is the person, is the Messiah, is the very, very person that we're talking about in this. 456 prophecies were fulfilled. You can't even, you can't, you can't even calculate it. I mean, the number is, is, is too large. I mean, I guess when they finally get the supercomputer up and running, we can try and figure it out. So, this is 
anyone who rejects Jesus Christ as Messiah is rejecting a fact. Okay? Because it's statistically impossible, mathematically impossible, that Jesus is not the Messiah. That Jesus is not the Christ child. This is proved probably better than any event that's ever taken place in the world. It's proved beyond the shadow of the doubt. His identity is resoundingly confirmed, absolutely resoundingly confirmed. And, and all the identities that we have seen over this past three weeks that we've been looking at, they all lead one thing. And this is really important for all of us to understand as Christians this morning, that it leads to our redemption. It leads to redemption. It leads to our redemption. So we're going to celebrate that fact this morning. What we are going to sing this morning and what we are going to look at as far as putting up some of these scriptures again this morning, this isn't conjecture. This is not somebody's idea of truth. This is a fact. This is an absolute fact that we embrace as Christians as a non-negotiable. Jesus Christ is Christ God. Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Okay. So, and I want to as we, as we listen to this music, some of the very, very wonderful old Christmas hymns, and as we read these very familiar verses this morning, I want everybody to remember the resounding significance, the profound significance of that fact that we looked at. Let's pray before we get started. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for this season. Father God, we just we so... So appreciate what you have done for us, Lord God. The things that you have done in, in everything, but especially today, we honor you. And we just uh, we want to lift up our voices to you in praise. Father, and we just thank you so much for the gift of your son. That he came 2,029 years ago, Lord, to the little town in Bethlehem for our redemption. That, that was the plan from eternity past. And you have orchestrated it absolutely perfect and given us a statistically impossible event as our fact that we know who Jesus is. We love you, Lord. Thank you so much for everything that you do. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Okay. Grace, can you come up? We're going to get